Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the Second Mile Fellowship Bible study for today. We are in Genesis 21 and 22. And moving forward, I'm going to try to uh, make these a little more concise. Uh, in time past, what has happened is I get down through here and I get excited and I start trying to exhaust every part or aspect of the text. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to minimize that uh, for your sake and mine uh, moving forward. But uh, just to give you the outline again of Genesis chapter 21, let's get into the scripture here. Verse number 1 through 8, I have that titled, The Birth of Isaac. A couple things to uh, notice is that we see promises realized. Verse number 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. This is exactly the way God operates. He always operates according to what he has said, what he has spoken. He will always bring that to pass. We see it also there in verse number two, which God had spoken unto him. And then uh, covenant is kept, verse number four, after the, the uh, birth of Isaac, we see God uh, committing, or excuse me, Abraham committing to the um, uh, token of the covenant. And uh, that is a circumcision found in verse uh, number four. Verses 9 through 21, I have that titled, Hagar and Ishmael Expelled. Now, as you look down through here, there is a contention. And obviously, when you don't do th things God's way, there's always contention. And this happens, and it manifests itself as soon as the child's weaned. Before he was even born, you saw contention, and, and it just kind of is continuing on. Now, as far as Abraham essentially giving her some water and and a sack and, and sending her and Ishmael on, on the way, it seems kind of cruel, you know, right at the onset. But make no mistake, this is what God had ordained. You know, remember, God said uh, that, verse number 12, God said to Abram, uh, Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of the bomb woman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, listen to her. Do this, and then he gives the reason for, in Isaac shall thy seed be called See, God had a purpose for it, and God had ordained the parting of ways, and sometimes cutting things and people out of our lives is a hard thing to do, but it's necessary for the betterment of uh, your walk with God. That was certainly the case here. Now, someone might say, well, that's awful about you know Hagar and Ishmael. What about them? Well, Let's see, what about them? If you continue down through there, they go on, and yes, they hit hard times, but what they had not done as they hit hard times was call out unto God. And once they did, then you see the lad called out, verse number 17, and God uh, heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God um, supplied their need, and not only that, but blessed them. And so by Abraham cutting them out of his life, it, number one, it fulfilled, it brought harmony into the home. It fulfilled the purpose in which God had for Abraham all along until he messed up and went and had this child outside of wedlock unto Hagar. But then God also used this to bless Hagar and Ishmael What when they called out unto the Lord. And that's a very important thing. Sometimes you need to cut people out of your life Maybe there's contention, problems, whatever you need to cut them out of your life. What they do from that point on is not your concern. You need to follow God as Abraham did. Their responsibility is to call out on God. Maybe they never would have. Maybe they never would have had not Abraham cut them out of, out of their life. And so, you know, there's, there's uh, some very important things to take away there. Verses 22 through 20, uh, excuse me, 34, the remainder of the chapter is Abraham and Abimelech's covenant. This is the same Abimelech who uh, Abraham and Sarah had lied to in the previous chapter. They make a covenant. They're having disputes about water. They make a covenant. We'll see this renewal of the covenant later on with his son and the uh, the next Abimelech. Abimelech is kind of the is a title such as Pharaoh. It's kind of the king of the Philistines, whereas Pharaoh is king of Egypt. All right. Now moving on to chapter number twenty-two. Chapter number twenty-two has one of the just one of the greatest stories of uh, faith and sacrifice throughout Scripture. Save Jesus Christ, of course. It is an image of Jesus Christ as well, but not in the way you think. Not in the way you think. I have this uh, divided out into four sections. The verse, first two verses, I have that titled God's Command to Sacrifice Isaac. And multiple times you'll notice 
uh, in these verses, but multiple times in this passage of Scripture, when God is speaking unto Abraham, he says, now take thy son, verse number two, thine only son, Isaac. And that's interesting because Abraham had another son, right? But that wasn't the son that God had recognized. It was not the son that God had ordained Abraham to have. That was the son of the flesh, whereas Isaac was the son of the spirit. And there's a lot of imagery there that concerning the Jews in the, uh, in the church later on that we see throughout Scripture. Um, so anyway... This is God's command. He says, take your son and go kill him. This is the son that I have given you. This is the son you waited many, many years to have, son of your old age, the promised child. Now go and sacrifice him unto me. What a hard ask, right? It's a hard ask that he uh, uh, that he did. And, you know, many times I say these words to our church. I say that there is an order of things that God has. God is always number one and must always be number one. And then if you're married, then it is your spouse. That is number two. And then it is your children. That is number three. And that is the proper and correct order that God would have it to be. And many people look at me cross-eyed because while they may not love their wife uh, or their, their husband, their spouse, um, in, in the uh, way God would have them to, which is you know the sacrificial love, maybe they might not love them like that. They love their children like that. Maybe they won't put their spouse before God uh, because of you know something they, they may have done, but they'll put their children there. And man, I see that all the time in ministry, people elevating their children above that uh, God would have them to do above God himself. This is biblical proof that the order of things in which I have stated is correct because God told Abraham, he said, look, I am, it's either me or Isaac. Which one is it? You want to put Isaac on the pedestal, then you go ahead. But I'm telling you that he must die if we're going to have this relationship. And in verses 3 through 14, you see that Abraham uh, said, it, it's me and you. And there's that, you know, that song is coming to mind right now. But um, God immediately, he did not hesitate. He did not have to pray about it. He just did what God said to do. He said, and Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of the young men, took Isaac, and he went. Abraham was committed to placing God first in his life. Now, as you look down through here, I have um, yeah, 3 through 14 as Abraham, Abraham's faith is displayed because Abraham immediately went out and did that. He gets there, he sets the men aside, and he says, the lad and I will go up and we'll return again uh, unto you. Him and Isaac get to the mount, and he says, well, or, you know, is going up to the mountain. he says, Isaac says, we have the wood and we have the fire, whatever, where's the sacrifice? And he says, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. You know what? Had, had Abraham had to sacrifice, sacrifice Isaac, that statement is still true. Because God is the one that provided Isaac uh, for Abraham, and um, but thank God he didn't. He provided a substitute. Now, I said that um, this is a picture of Jesus Christ, and a lot of people put uh, that Abraham is God the Father and Isaac is the Son because, you know, the Father is sacrificing the Son, but that's not the way to look at it. That's certainly not the best application anyway. The best application is that Abraham is an image of God, and Isaac is an image of you and me. Why? Because you see the wood on, on his back. You see the pronouncement of God. Isaac is under the judgment of God. And because he's under the judgment of God, he is going to suffer the consequences of judgment. There's nothing that he can do. Abraham bound him and he laid him up there. Isaac is completely helpless in and of himself. But what did God do? Just exactly what Abraham said. He said, I will provi he provided a lamb. Uh, we see there in verse number 13, uh, in uh, behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And the ram is illustrated, illustrative of Jesus Christ because why? The ram was the substitute in the stead of his son. We see there in verse number 13, he was caught by his horns. That's important because 
If he had been caught by his body, he would have been marred up, but he was not. Jesus was perfect, and he provided a perfect substitute for you and I. So it's a great picture, and and I hope that you're counting as we go through here all of these images, all these foreshadowings of Jesus Christ. Verses 15 through 19, I have that titled, God Blesses Abraham's Obedience, and um, he is essentially restating the promises all the way back in Genesis number 12. He's reassuring him. Uh, of that. And in verses 20 through 24, I have that Rebecca's lineage. Rebecca, of course, will become the wife of Isaac. And um, we'll see that in the next couple chapters. So that's going to be, I I, I really tried. I don't know how well I did because I don't kind of keep the timer. I tried to make this a little quicker. And and as we go through, I'll I'll make them, um, you know, try to condense them down a little bit to give you some things, but not everything so that you will, uh, you will study it out and and, uh, you know, just be an awe and wonder when you re- God reveals these things unto you as he does to me. All right, so that's going to be it. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.